Hello, everyone, and welcome to this event, Windows on Tea, Insights on Chado, by Urasenke Tea Master Kimura Soke. My name is Simon Wright, and I am Director of Programming at Japan House London. And today we are delighted to welcome back Tea Master Kimura Soke from the London branch of the Urasenke Foundation, uh, the purpose of which is to preserve and foster the cultural heritage of Urasenke, one of the major tea schools in Japan, through support of research and public education concerning the way of tea. Before we start, I would just like to introduce a few rules uh, for those watching on Zoom. Please note that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of the event. And please do use the question and answer feature to type your questions for the presenter at any time through the session. If you do not want your name to be attached to the question, you can also opt to send it anonymously. Um, questions will be collected by Japan House moderators and a selection will be answered live at the end of the event. We hope that we will be able to answer uh, as many as possible, if not all. Please note that the contents of this event will be streamlined live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and LinkedIn, where a recording will be archived later. So today's event is broadcast live from London in the UK. And after discussing the relationship between windows and tea in the space of the Chashitsu, the Japanese tea house, in the first event in January, this second special online lecture highlights other less known aspects of chado, sometimes referred to as chanoyu, the Japanese way of tea. During the event, we are introduced to the use of water and its significance in the practice of tea from the sound of boiling water from the kama, a uh, uh, kettle, which creates an, an harmonious atmosphere, to cold water from a mizusashi, a water jar, which uh, symbolizes the end of a tea session. Kimurosoke also explains what other sounds are often heard during the practice of tea and how they relate to the aesthetic sense which connects all the elements at play in making the experience as valuable for the guests as it is also for the host. And finally, there will be the opportunity for those attending to ask Kimura Sensei uh, questions. Uh, and please do send through those questions throughout the session. So I would now like to introduce our speaker, Kimura Soke, from the London branch of the Urasenke. Foundation School of Tea. Thank you very much, Kimura Sensei. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a great pleasure to have you with us again. I know that your first uh, lecture was extremely inspiring, and we're all looking forward to this very much again. Thank you so much. And just to introduce you uh, to those of us uh, online, you were born in 1955 and you graduated from the Bunka Gakuin and in 1991 joined the Urasenke Foundation. Uh, Kimura-san has worked as an instructor for the Urasenke New York Center between 1994 and 1997, when he became the representative of the London branch of Urasenke. Kimura-sensei worked mainly in the UK and Europe, introducing Chado, the way of tea, through presentations and lectures and the last one was extremely inspiring. I am very much looking forward to the next, as we all are. Thank you very much. And I shall hand over to you, Kimura Sensei. Thank you. Thank you for your kind introduction. I'm Soke Kimura from Chato Urasenke Konnichiwa. I came to the UK in 1997. The London branch is based in Greenwich. And I'm promoting Chado in Europe from here. In January webinar, I talked about the differences between tea ceremony, Chado, and Chanoi. Also, in relation to the Windology exhibition, I discussed the Chashitsu, a space dedicated to Chanoi, with a focus on its windows. 
the talk was about sense of beauty and the light and shadow in Chanoi. You can access the archive video from Japan House London website. In January, the theme was light and shadow. This time, I would like to talk about water and sound. My speech has again been translated by the Tankokai UK Association's Mr. Yamaguchi. Please refer to subtitles. I will briefly explain about water and sound. Then we will look at actual scenes in Chanoi with these keywords in mind. Water is essential for Chanoi. My talk is not about properties, taste, temperature, or amount of water needed to make matcha tea. I will discuss instead the meaning of water to the Japanese and how it is expressed in Chanoi. The image of water is purity. The sky and the earth create this purity of water. The rain falls on mountains and flows to lower lands. Then it springs forth from under the ground. Water is reborn after touching the earth. Another form is water on grass and leaves at night or early morning. Moisture in the air is condensed. Water formed by the meeting of air and the sky is called tsui. This word also means short lived, like bubbles that form and disappear in the river. The kanji character also reads arawa meaning thing that clearly visible or evident. Many people may have heard the term loji. It is a pathway to the chest, a special space for Chanoi or the surrounding garden. In kanji character means a place to reveal The sound reveals most clearly the experience of a host in Chanoi. Equally, the experience of the guest is important to appreciate the quality of the sound. Just like the sense of beauty created by light and shadow through the windows, we enjoy the subtle differences in sound. When we move, there is a sound. In the host intentionally makes a sound, it will be artificial and not gracious. What is critical in the sound that come naturally as the host moves without any intention? In addition, the sound should not be distracting. It is not a matter of volume. Sometimes we can barely hear the sound, but it resonates in our hearts. That is sound of Chanoi. I would now like to show you actual scenes in Chanoi with a focus on water and the sound. Some slides have a movie clip where you can hear some sounds. But for the most part, I ask you to use your imagination. Let's start. In Chanel, it is important to be punctual. Of course, we are all human beings. So that does not mean being precise like a machine. This may sound vague, but a margin 
would be about the length of time that beautiful dew or water drops maintain their shape. When the preparation is largely done, the host will take water in a teoke bucket and sprinkle it in front of the house before guests arrive. It is the protocol to purify the space before guests' arrival. If the water is sprinkled in front of the house, it tells the guest that it is ready and that they are welcome to come in, which means is the sign that the event is ready. On sunny day, the water reflects the light and the space looks shiny. The guest meets a tea gathering for a day. The way the water is sprinkled tells the guest how much dedication the host has made and it will raise their expectations. In Chanoi, there are many visible signs and calls to minimize verbal communication. This sight's slight gap in the door is one such sign. It means, please enter. We call it tegakari, meaning hand hook. The guest enter the house quietly. They go to the changing room near the entrance and remove their coat or fix their kimono. They leave their belongs in the corner of the room. They then proceed to the next room, which again has a slight gap at the door. They wait here until all guests arrive. In Chanoi, the invitation letter says who will be the main guest and who else will be joining with a specific seating order. The main guest shokyak is the representative of all the guests. He or she does everything first, actively creating the atmosphere with the host. And the last guest is called Tsume. That is a person who liaises between the host and guest. When all guests arrive, the Tsume informs the host that everyone is present. The host brings the slightly warm water to the waiting room. The guests quench their thirst from the journey. At the same time, they learn the taste of the water for the tea. Then, main guest head to the group to the lodge, lead to the group to the lodge. A passage or a garden path to the chest. In the lodge, there are stepping stones placed with a comfortable gap for walking on in kimono. Distance is expertly calculated. The lodge is covered with evergreen trees, carefully planted not to block the passage. These trees are cleverly trimmed to let the light and the wind pass through nicely. Here again, the guests see the sprinkled water. It is neither too wet nor too dry. The guest walks through the greenery. 
they appreciate the different shade of green, the reflection of the light from the dew on the leaves. They arrive at a place called Koshikake Machiai, a waiting hut. The seat for the main guest is marked with a different style or type of stone on the ground. As a gesture to offer relaxation, there is a set of tobacco utensils. As the guest sit there, the rustling the leaves may make the guest feel they have sense a slight sound. Sometimes birds or insects add music. Gentle light passing through the leaves surround the guest. There is a gate near the waiting area. Beyond the gate is a tsukubai, stone basin filled with water. The host brings a cedar bucket filled with the water to the tsukubai. The host sprinkles water around the tsukubai with a wooden ladle, hishaku. This is a protocol for uh, this is a prologue, prologue for Chanoyu. Of course, the host cleans everything before the guest arrives. He nevertheless performs a, a purification protocol in front of the guest as a symbol, symbolic gesture to unite the host and the guest. The host purifies his mouth, hands, and mind. He pours the rest of water from the bucket into the scuba. This is a difficult protocol for a host. If the host concentrates on making a sound, it will become too obvious. If he try to be casual, it will not make a consummated sound. He, re he reappeared to open the gate and walk toward the guest. All the guests stand, led by the main guest, and exchange a slight silent bow. This is the first greeting of the day in Chanoyu. We simply bow silently. The host enters the chest through the Nijiriguchi, an entrance some 65 centimeter wide and 65 centimeter high. There is a small hole in the ground by the Nijiriguchi. This hole contains some clean leaves that the host picked up in the morning. They are still slightly covered with dew. This is called Chiriana. It is a place to drop your emotional conflict or irrelevant thoughts. The main guest leads the group entering the chest through the Nijiriguchi after the host. Nijiriguchi is the gateway connecting the daily world and the Chanoi. Last guest, Tsume close the door and lock the Nijiriguchi. The small but distinctive sound of the door and lock echo in the chest. During the guest entry, the host is sitting by the Sadoguchi, the host's entrance. From behind the door, the host is listening to the sound in the chest. 
This is subtle sound from the guest's movement or sound from the door when it is closed and locked. All the windows are closed and they are covered with lead blinds. The slight amount, of, slight amount of the light coming from outside is diffused by the shoddy screens. It gives a gentle glow inside the room. Once the room becomes silent, the host quietly opens the door. Channel you start in silence. This is the first act. Everyone in the room bows. There is no signal, but everyone's movement is synchronized as one. This is a moment similar to when people are just about to play a musical instrument. The host and the main guest exchange verbal greetings, and each of other guests follows, expressing their joy at being invited. After some dialogue, the host adds a chuckle to the hearts or low to boil the water. When the guests enter the chest, the kama contains cold water. It exterior wet and glowing. The wet appearance symbolizes life. The kama is vibrantly alive. As a host lifts the kama, the guest can see some already lit charcoal burning red. Host press the additional charcoal around them and put the kama back in the house. The new charcoal starts to catch fire and there is a sound like a bird chipping under the kama. Then the host serve a meal just enough to alleviate the guest's hunger. Following the most orthodox manner in Japan, the host concentrates on serving and does not join the meal. Equally, when the host is present in the chest, the guest stop eating and cover their bowls as a courtesy. During the meal, the temperature of kama gradually rises. The kama has a special future. When the temperature goes up, it starts to amplify the sound of the water coming to boil. Each kama has a unique sound. The guest enjoy the meal while listening to the sound of kama. The sound reaches a peak as the meal is about to finish. The guest leaves the room briefly. While the guests are waiting outside, the host prepared second act. The most important session for the day to serve koicha. The host takes a gong into the chest to let the guest know that the preparation is finished. The sound of gong echo echoes in the chest and reaches the guest in the lodge. That prompts the guest 
to crouch in the lodge and listen. When the first gaunt echo disappears and the silence comes back, the guest hear further gaunt. The guest returned to the chest to find a different atmosphere with open windows and flooding the light. In a space spot called Tokonoma, a scroll is hanging during the first session. In the second session, it has been replaced with flower enough veils. Both the flowers and the vase have water drops. The flowers are the only object in the session that have life. A water jar and the tea caddy are placed in the space where the host is to make tea. The surface of water jar is also moist with drops. Steam is coming from the kama, and the boiling water makes a unique sound. Host quietly slide open the door and bring in utensils to make tea. As the host walks on tatami, guest hear the sound. The host placed the water ladle on the stand for the kama lid. It is a motion like a bird approaching the water surface, natural and steady. While the ladle is placed on the lid stand, guest hears a sound, a, a sound that resonates in everyone's heart. Image a drop of water falling into a pool of water in silence. It is like that. The host and the guest bow together and the climax of the event starts. Host gracefully handle all the utensils in a natural movement. In Chanoi, the sound that the host makes should not be disturbing. Each motion is defined. The sound did not be heard by the ear, but, but by the participant's sensitivity. When the host's mind gets distracted, the sound becomes simply noise. The sound of boiling water is continually coming from the kama. With this calming sound, both the host guest feel a state of, of peace detached from daily life. The host wholeheartedly need matcha and offer it to the guest. Each guest in turn hold a chawan and lower their head, expressing gratitude for the precious moment, space, and opportunity. Matcha's slightly sweet taste fill the guest's heart with 
indescribable joy, uh, with indescribable joy. From this moment on, the host and the guests enjoy conversation. Meanwhile, the sound of gently boiling water continues from the common. It is like accompanying music and embracing the entire environment. In the chest, the shadow creates the window frame slowly drift across the tatami. At the end, host pour the cold water into the kama. This water symbolizes a break, similar to rolling the curtain before the next act. The sound of boiling water comes to the abrupt end with addition of cold water. For a moment, chest becomes totally silent. When the sound resumes from the karma, it signals a new beginning. The host add more charcoals into the hearth and water in the kama, preparing a new session to enjoy the post-climax moment. Before returning the kama to the hearth, the host wipe its surface with a small wet white cloth. Steam right from the surface of the kama because it has hot water inside. This gesture of adding water and wiping the karma surface symbolizes the rebirth. After this, host and guest Enjoy frosty usucha over relaxed conversation. There is a document from the middle 19th century describing an actual chanoi. End of the document reveals the biggest pleasure for chanoi konishiro. In the end, I return to chest calmly. I bend down and enter through the Nijiriguchi and sit alone in front of the house. The guest could have stayed a little longer. I wonder where they are now. We had a once in a lifetime gathering. I realize this cannot be repeated. Then I make myself a bowl of tea. This is the ultimate joy. It is a tranquil moment. Only the Kama speaks and no one else. This is quintessential state of Chanoi, which is really hard to achieve. In Chanoi, 
comma is called the second host from the beginning to the end the comma is always in the chest with a guest even when the host is not there comma always stay with the guest it also refers to the character characteristic sound of the comma the sound when the temp uh, the sound when the temperature rise and that was boiling with water there's always with a guest even when the host and the guest remain silent the comma plays sound to embrace them if the partition partitioners cannot appreciate such sound the gathering is deemed meaningless This concludes my talk on water and sound. Today's talk was mainly from the host's perspective. But as I mentioned, la mentioned last time, Chamayu is only complete with the partic participation of the guests. It is not an event to satisfy the host's ego by showing off or boasting. In Chanoi, the world the host created should be shared and enjoyed with the guest. Also, there should not be any fixed rule. There are many ways to enjoy it. Today, I talked about how I would enjoy the occasion. Chanoyu is very personal and individual. I therefore shared my own world of Chanoyu. I talked about Chanoyu from perspective of water and sound today. I hope this has stimulated the audience's interest in Chanoyu. Finally, one more word on water. In addition to purity, water has another symbolic meaning, that is impermanence. The word impermanence reminds many Japanese of the essay, the Hojoki, written by Kamono Chome in 1212. That was three years before the Magna Carta was enacted in England in 1215. Let me share the preface of the book. Yukukawa no nagare wa taezu shite, shikamo moto no mizu ni arasu. The author Kamono Chome lived in a very troubled period with various natural disasters and the political tumor. Seven, a great fire in Kyoto burned a third of the capital. Three years later, a tornado hit the city. The capital was relocated abruptly that year. Followed by the two years long feminine due to natural disaster, Many people died from the starvation. Then there was a major earthquake in 1185. Kamunochome survived this difficult period. 
He did not have a steady job or comfortable lifestyle. Later in life, he came to live in the assembly style house with a three meter by three meter space. Hojo referred to this space. In this house, Hojo, he kept a detailed record of disaster. The title of books comes from this space. The following river never stops, and yet water never stay the same. Form flow floats upon the pool, scattering, reforming, never lingering long. If we compare the human life to be flowing river, everyday events are like a bit of foam upon the pools. This philosophy has been passed down to the present as a common idea in the Japanese mind. Just like his house Hojo, Chanoyu takes place in a small, small space and the participant accepts it as a transient momentary event. When the host's mind gets distracted, the guest can sense it. Equally, when the guest gets distracted, host can tell. The host and the guest jointly create the form floating on the flowing the water. That is Chanoi. Tea gathering completely disappears once it is finished, just like the form. Light, shadow, and sound give life. That is gone. Today, I talked about water and the sound in Chanoi. Thank you for your attention. The last time I was asked a question about the beauty during the Q&A session, I expressed my own interpretation. I mentioned that the most beautiful moon is something that we could not actually see, but visualize in our heart. After the talk, I discovered a symphony by coincidence. I would like to share the music. It is famous and I trust you have not heard of it. Please sign any videos too. Please search for minutes 33 second and John Thank you very much Thank you very much Kimura Sensei for your fascinating talk through tea, water, and sound. We have several questions already coming through, and I know we have some time. Uh, so I'd like to, to be able to start that straight away. And, and for everyone listening, uh, Kimura Sensei will be speaking in Japanese for this part. And we very much appreciate the support of Yamaguchi Yasuhiro from Tanko UK, uh, the association formed by practitioners I apologize, I think I might have uh, fallen off there. So for the question and answer session, uh, 
Kimura Sensei will speak in Japanese, and we very much appreciate uh, the assistance of Yamaguchi Yasuhiro from Tanko Kai UK, the association formed by practitioners of the Way of Tea who support the Urasenke activities in the UK. Will be interpreting, and he will be participating off camera. So let me go to our first question. In that brief disappearance, I lost some things as well. Here we go. It talks about dew. Uh, this is a question uh, from, from, from Lauren. And, and I was fascinated to hear as well myself at the beginning, speaking about different kinds of water. And here we have, Lauren has asked, I've been told there are several types of dew. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about them. Is there something like a phrase or a poem that, that talks about this? Um, as for the different types of Jews, um, he does not have clear uh, idea about how many uh, variations there are. De, eh, as for the term Jew itself, he there's one thing he would like to share. De, just a little bit of a slide. 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 Just a little bit of one of the slides that we looked at earlier. Yes, yes we can see this. Uh, this scroll reads Mei Leki Leki Lo Dodo. He's going to explain what it means. Um, obvious things are clearly visible. で And those that are revealed are right in front of us or right there. So the truth is in front of us. And this is a proverb from a Zen, but what is apparent or obvious and what exists um, in front of us is a question to each individual. De, eh, de Did this answer your question? I hope it does, yes. Thank you very much, Kimura Sensei. We have another question. This is from Christina. Um, she says, good evening and thank you very much for this important presentation about the gong that the host brings to the chashitsu before koicha. Is there a specific place for the gong inside the tea house? 
And does it remain in the tea house during Demaya? But the gong does not stay in the tea room, it's usually kept outside of the tea room. Um, each house creates a space to house the gong, so uh, there's no set rule about where it should be kept. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We, we have some more questions uh, coming through. Ah, and so this is from Rachel. Thank you very much for your interesting uh, presentation. Do you have any tips to enjoy Channel Yu in a city setting with city noises in the background? Is this possible? じゃあ、いろんな楽しみ方があるので、その今日ご紹介したのは伝統的な日本のま、理想的なお茶の形を紹介しましたが、あの、街中でのお茶っていうのも当然今の時代あるでしょうね。Um, today he introduced a very traditional um, old styles way to enjoy Chanoyu, but in recent times there are differences um, in settings and also how people enjoy, so it's all individuals. Um, this may not directly answer the question, but everybody has different backgrounds and experiences and the way people have lived. So some people's um, tolerance to the sounds may be different and even in the city settings uh, people still could enjoy the channel you thank you thank you very much we have um, another question which is about sound I suppose really what is the topic of discussion among the guests uh, during the ceremony. Are the guests at liberty to discuss any topic or does etiquette dictate that they confine themselves to the beauty of the scene, for example, or the specifics of uh, the practice? あの、あ、質問わかりました。えっと、答えは、あの、最後に言いましたように、これは茶の湯っていうのは非常に個人的なものですから、as he mentions in conclusion, um, there is no rules about how the channel you should be enjoyed. So um, the any topics is possible as long as people enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a question here. Um, 
Uh, this is from Javier. Uh, greetings from Peru. Uh, thanks for enlightening us about water. Would it be possible for you to give uh, some tips about using hishaku, the ladle? So, yes, you're asking specifically what it is. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I think uh, you mentioned um, using the hishaku right at the very beginning, um, where in the, the scenario with the tsugubai, and you mentioned, I think, how the water, the sound of water should not be too obvious, but also it had to be enough. Maybe it's related to that. その触れたものと一緒になれるように心がけています。だから尺を持ったら尺と一緒に自分がなったよ。例えばあの音楽家の方が楽器と一緒になるような、そんな感じじゃないですかね。not only about the hishaku, but any utensils we touch, we become part of it. It's like a musicians playing the musical instruments, and when they pick up the utensils or the music instruments, they will be one. And that's the same idea that we try to pay attention to every time we use the utensils. You're saying this, Sensei, reminds me very much of how tools were described by craftsmen, uh, about how it was an extension of, of, of their body and, and, and how they use it. That, that, thank you. That, that's, that's, that's very enlightening. Thank you very much indeed. I think we have maybe chance for maybe one or two more questions. Um, this is about the nijiriguchi, if I may. Could you tell us a little bit more about the significance of the small entrance, the nijiriguchi? Is it to encourage humility or is there another notion behind this? Nijiriguchi, mazu, nijiriguchi ga there are several theories or views about how Nijiriguchi was adapted into a chastu theory, even amongst the scholars. すきな話が一つあって、その、ま、中国のお話から来ています。が、あの、古中日月流しという言葉があって、壺の中で日にちがたくさん過ぎていくっていう言葉があります。One of the stories he likes related to Nijiriguchi is a story from China. And that one reads as Kochu Nichigetsu Nagashi, meaning that the day and night are very long in a clay pot. There was a fairy um, which was living in the clay pot during the night in China. 
、えー、若者がその仙人の後を追って一緒に入れてもらえます。And a young man follows him, the fairy being an old wise man, but not a real human,、uh, follows him and asks him to take him into the clay pot. そこには別世界があって、あの非常に楽しい日々を過ごします。There was a completely different world in the pot, and he spent a very happy time in there. で、遊ぶことにも飽きて、元の世界に戻ろうと考えます。And once he had enough of the pleasant time in there, he thinks about returning back to the real world. で、仙人にた頼んで、外に出ると、時間が経っていなかったっていうお話で。And when he returns, he realized that no time has passed, and it was the same as when he left. 何やの話と一緒です。It's the same story as Narnia. マトリックスとも同じかもしれない。You could say that maybe it's the same as Matrix. 茶室の握り口の中に入ったときに、入った亭主も客もその中ではすべての世界から離れて楽しい時を過ごすというそういう部分がこのお話と同じで好きです。Um, both the host and guest goes into the tea room、uh, through Nichiriguchi and they spend the time away from the daily life and share the joy. And that is the same Message as the tale he shared. だから、入る前に、今日のスライドでもご紹介したように、チリ穴という穴があって、そこに何かを捨てて中に入るわけです。で、皆さんにお尋ねしたいのは、お茶に呼ばれたときに、あなたはチリ穴に何を捨てて、あの小さい穴から入りますか So、um, he showed a slide about Chiriana or dust hall, which is right in front of the,、um, the Nichiriguchi. And each of us has to think what we read to enter into this new world of Chastu. I'm a little bit of a question. 僕の意見言っただけでごめんなさい。Um, I hope he answered that part of your question. Thank you very much, Kimura Sensei.、Um, I, 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 I feel somewhat, in some way, that I, by listening to your words today, have, have gone through some kind of nijiriguchi. Thank you for, for, for that story at the end. It's,、um, it, it, it's, It's fascinating and, and, and new to hear for me. Th thank you so much. We, we've actually already come to、uh, the end of, of the time we have for this. We have so many more questions.、I'm, we'll try and record these so that、um, uh, for, for the future. So thank you so much、uh, for everybody who has been watching, but we don't have any more time, I'm afraid. Thank you very much, Kimura Sensei.、Uh, thank you. It was extraordinary and, and, and so wonderful to listen to you again.、Um, I hope maybe we can do it another time.、Um, there is so much to learn from you. And also, thank you very much to Yamaguchi san、uh, from Tanko Kai for your help with interpreting during the question and answer session and for your great contribution in helping to arrange. Thank you very much to everyone listening. And、uh, you will receive a short. Uh, feedback form by email afterwards. Please do fill it in as it would help us to continue with work like this. Just before we disappear,、uh, 
Uh, I'd like to go through what we have coming up uh, at Japan House London. We continue our windows on tea, the live chado demonstrations with Tanko Kai UK. That's inside Japan House. If you haven't uh, seen these yet, there are, you can still sign up. And that is until the 20th of April. Of course, these are in association with our current exhibition, which is Windowology, uh, New Architectural Views from Japan, where which has inside a tea house, uh, a full-size uh, reconstruction of uh, Koshiezu, which is a architectural drawing used by carpenters to create uh, especially tea houses. And that's until the 24th of April. We have next online an Aizome Indigo Dying workshop visit and conversation with Higeta Tadashi. This is also connected with our windowology uh, exhibition, uh, the windows on craft section. And this is on Tuesday, the 12th of April, when we take a visit to the Higeta workshop in Mashiko. And last, just for now, we have Windows on Mifune. Windows on Mifune is a series of films which are created uh, starting with, uh, during the period of windowology. And the first of these is Rashomon the epic film which uh, from the golden age of Japanese cinema, which shows how different perspectives uh, can give you uh, a number of different truths. And that's on Sunday, the 10th of April at Japan House London. Thank you very much. Once again, Kimura Soke Sensei, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your wisdom with us. I hope we can do this again uh, another time uh, in the not too distant future. And to Yamaguchi-san as well, thank you very much. And thank you everybody who has been joining us today. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>